My name is Benedict DK. I'm Aaron Flores. I'm Robert Davis. And I'm Sam Herrera. And today we'll be talking about monopole and dipole antennas. First, we will begin by discussing the basic antenna theory. And from there, we will go more specifically into monopole and dipole antennas. For both, we will discuss the description, the radiation plots, and their common uses. So we'll start with general antenna theory. The basic function of an antenna is to transmit or receive a signal without the need for a hardwired connection. This is achieved by transmitting and receiving electromagnetic waves through the air. These types of electromagnetic waves range from visible light to radio waves. Antennas have a very specific frequency of bands at which they operate. The frequency of the bands depend on the application. For example, regular cell phones use signal bands between 1850 and 1900 MHz. Television is broadcast between 54 and 216 MHz. FM radio operates between 87.5 and 108 MHz. These are just a few of the examples of different frequencies at which antennas operate. The other features that make up an antenna include radiation pattern, which is the variation of power radiated by the antenna, as a function of the angle from the antenna, the field regions, which are the fields surrounding the antenna, the far field being the most important, directivity, the measure of how directional an antenna's radiation pattern is, the efficiency, which relates to the power dissipated in the antenna, and the gain, which describes how much power is being transmitted in the direction of peak radiation. Bring widths are the direction of the maximum radiation, and the side lobes are the smaller beams away from the main beam. Impedance relates, to the, relates the voltage to the current and needs to be matched in order for the antenna to radiate properly. The first antenna we'll talk about are monopole antenna. This is a class of radio antenna made from a straight rod-shaped conductor, which is then generally mounted perpendicularly over a ground plane. The bottom left picture shows a monopole antenna with a singular conductor rod placed perpendicularly over a large rectangular ground plane. To the right of that diagram shows a quarter wavelength monopole antenna. You can see the quarter wavelength antenna on top of the ground plane. The right of that shows how this diagram behaves due to inner steering and reflection. Monopole antenna have an unidirectional radiation pattern meaning it radiates equal power in all directions perpendicular to the antenna plane. This can be seen in our 3D model to the right. Radiation, radiated power varies with elevation angle, with the radiation dropping off to zero at the zenith on the antenna axis. Monopole antenna radiates vertically polarized radio waves. While monopole antennas aren't really used that much anymore, there are a few common uses that we can all relate to. These include AM radio broadcasting, walkie-talkie antennas, the antennas on older cell phones, and car radio antennas, just to name a few, with car radio antenna being the most relatable use that we can all see in our everyday lives. Dipole antennas are just like monopole antennas, except Dipole antennas use its two pieces of rods instead of one. As you can see on the picture below to the left, the dipole antenna has two rods and has a coax to transmit or receive data on the bottom. The picture on the right is a description behind the design. The dipole antenna radiation plot is similar to the monopole. Its radiation pattern is shaped like a donut, symmetric about the axis of the dipole. The maximum radiation is at the right angles to the dipole, dropping off to zero on the antenna's axis. A dipole antenna mounted vertically will be omnidirectional in the horizontal plane at the expense of radiation in the vertical direction. Just like the monopole antenna, the dipole antenna really isn't used that much in today's society. However, there are still a few examples that we can all relate to and have all seen before. The old rabbit ear sets on top of an, an old TV are a really good example of a dipole antenna. Also, in-home FM broadcasters and antennas are also examples of dipole antennas. 
Shortwave antennas, which are constructed and used by radio amateurs for transmission, are another example. And the most relevant example of dipole antennas in today's world is high-end two-way radios, such as the walkie-talkies that are used by police dispatchers, firefighters, and other people of that nature. You may have noticed that the monopole and dipole antennas are very similar, which they are. The main difference, though, is the size. The monopole is typically half the size of the dipole, so therefore, when you need a shorter antenna, you'll look for a monopole antenna. Monopole is an antenna with just the radi radiating element where the ground of the transmitter is connected to the electrical ground, which serves as an image ground to the radiating element, thus the name monopole. Monopole only has the one element. Dipole is where the ground and the radiating elements are connected to two different elements where one is a radiating element and the other is the ground to the latter. Thus, the name dipole. There's also two radiating elements. Like I said before, monopole antennas are used when a shorter antenna is desired due to the size. The past few weeks, we have covered antennas in class. The monopole and dipole antennas were the first types of antennas studied in class. More specifically, we looked at folded half wave lengths dipole antennas and quarter wave lengths monopole antennas. From these two, we learn image theory. Image theory removes the ground plane and adds a current from the same distance as the electric field to ground. Image theory explains why a monopole antenna can look like a dipole antenna due to the image created to make it seem like the full dipole antenna. These antennas help provide a basic understanding before we covered Yazi, reflector, and other types of antennas within the following lectures in our antenna section of life. One of the fundamental design parameters for an antenna is the impedance. It has to be matched for the antenna to work properly. A few interesting topics we ran across while researching these antennas were the antennas on vehicles connected to a radio receiver is a half-wave dipole antenna and is equivalent to a quarter-wave monopole antenna due to image theory. The monopole antenna will only radiate half as much power as a dipole antenna since it can only radiate above ground. However, the directivity of a monopole antenna is twice the directivity of a dipole antenna despite the fact that a monopole antenna is half the size of a dipole antenna. And we found this to be really interesting. The dipole antenna is the reference antenna used by antenna companies to advertise the decibel gain figures of their antennas. In this presentation, we went over several things with you. We talked about antenna theory, where we learned that an antenna is achieved by transmitting and receiving electromagnetic waves through the air. We also learned that antennas have a specific frequency band at which they operate. So then we went into depth about monopole and dipole antennas. We talked about their similarities and their differences how a monopole antenna is essentially half of a dipole antenna, and that how the monopole antennas are really only used when size is of importance because they can be a lot smaller than dipole antennas. Even though both of these antennas aren't used much anymore in today's society, they are the basis for all of antenna theory, and by studying them, we can learn more about all antennas in general. As a group, we would like to thank you for watching this presentation and we hope that you learn more about general antenna theory as well as more than you already knew about monopole and dipole antennas. So thank you.